Oh, oh there he is. Yes. <laughs> the ball. Now I know this position that he's in right now because I've seen him a few times on our on our WhatsApp group. You'll throw something up every now and then, ball. This is your little man cave out in the garage there. You watch the footy, you have your drinks, and look at the jumper as well. That's awesome. Where'd you get that? Nice. It's um I only come in the mail on Friday, would you believe? So did it really? Get it from the yeah. club. Oh, you're an absolute superstar, mate. Now, there has never been, Dave, a bigger Melbourne supporter and player. This guy loves his demons, and he started at the Hawks. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. Bull, you, you're, a mur- you're a country boy, firstly. Okay, yeah. so let's introduce for those that don't know. Everybody knows. And f- for you, people are, are leaving messages, and I'll allude to these messages, and there's questions that they may ask you, and I'll ask from the fans. You, yeah. You're a Myrtleford boy, uh, country boy, come down to the city to play for Hawthorne. Talk me through that first. What was that experience like? Amazing, Robbo. Like, I was a Hawthorne supporter as a kid. So that was uh, <laughs> to rock up at the footy club like you would have went to Melbourne at the time. And I rocked up to Hawthorne and you had Dermot Brereton, Jason Dunstall, Chris Mew, Gary Ayres, oh. all the guys that I, Johnny yeah. Clayton, Ben yeah. Allen, Darren Jarman. Like, mate, oh. I was blown out, blown out of the water, mate, rocking up there. Uh. You you would have been, mate. Gary Ablett, I'll ask you about him. Ruth Dunn says she's got the same premiership hoodie. Leanne Hillers, I got my hoodie on Friday too. Those things will probably be flying out the door, mate. They're, they're, they're oh. awesome. I got hey, the girls a couple of T-shirts and that, so they're all happy. So. Yes, yes. Now, you've got a couple of girls, mate. Um, let's let's talk about that quickly, your, your family. Uh, a couple of girls. Gemma is the eldest. Yep, uh, she's 17. And she's 17 now. Yep. And she does she play does she play football? Yeah, she um she was playing at the Ashy Redbacks and then was lucky enough to get in the Oakley Chargers under 18s uh, when she wow. was 16. But unfortunately, wow. she she hurt her knee in the preliminary final this year. So yeah, that's right, that's right. And and your youngest daughter, yep, is almost six foot three. Six foot <laughs> Isn't two. that right? Six foot two. <laughs> she's so. huge. Yeah. That that augurs well. And she's our... fourteen. So. And she's fourteen, and she, yeah. and you're not. You're tall, you're shorter than me. I'm like you. <laughs> we're, we're stocky, muscly guys, mate. Yeah. We get it done that way. Where did that come from? What, what's the postman look like? My, my grandmother on mum's side was six foot. So there's a bit of, right. bit of height in the girls on that side of the family. So my cousin yeah. Britt's six foot. So, and my yeah. cousin Lisa's six foot one. So there's a history of tall girls in our family. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, that's where it comes from. Well, that's going to help her when yeah. she gets to about 18 and the Melbourne Demons uh, women's team are. Winning their fifth premiership in a row, and she just joins the team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam Michael asks, or well, Michael J. Adam, I'm not sure. I think it's Adam Michael asks, why did you keep 43 Guernsey for so long? The number 43 didn't want to pinch a lower number. That's a question. Answer. After my first year, Robbo, where I played 25 games, including the prelim in that first year, um, all my nephews and cousins and everyone was wearing 43. And yep. I, I didn't want to change. It was lucky, you know, to come down and um, I was on a one-year contract and to play every game, I just yep. thought it was a, a lucky number for me. Yeah, a uh, good number. You stuck with it. A lot of guys do that, stick with the higher numbers, you know. Yeah. Why I not? I had at, um, Brett Lovett retired at the end of that year and he was 17. And he actually yep. per- personally asked me if I'd like to take on his number. And okay. I, I actually said to him, look, i he was one of my idols growing up, even though a Hawthorne supporter. He was a Victorian yeah. player, superstar. And I yep. said, I told him the reason why. And he said, mate, stick with your number. So. Yep. No, nah, love it. Good answer. Um, question. Uh, actually, before the next question, I have to say congratulations to you, Riggers, because you've recently just won an award. Because another question here is, what are you doing these days? Well, Gus, I'll let you answer. You, you tell us, what have you been doing recently? And you've just won an award. What's that award as well? Well, if they looked at one of your "Where Are They Now?" segments that we did a couple of years ago, yes, you interviewed yep. me, and I was um, I'm working yep. for William Adams, where the um, yep. Caterpillar dealer uh, in Victoria and Tasmania, and I've been there since I started part time when I was still with Melbourne. So yep. I've been yep. there for 15 years now. It's gone very quick. Yes, but I was lucky enough to win the Salesman of the Year award. I I look after um, about 90 major accounts in construction. Yep. Selling yep. Caterpillar Diggers, yeah. Wow. And and that was his nickname too sometimes, was Diggers. Before you even worked for Caterpillar as well. That was just because I was a pest on the footy uh, Yes, yeah. <laughs> Diggers, Diggers rest. Yeah. Pest on the footy 
on the footy trips. And then he goes on to sell them and becomes this award-winning Well, we had best. to get some of you blokes up that just wanted to sleep all day. I had to get you up and about. So. <laughs> that wasn't me, mate. <laughs> yeah, actually it was. Hey, uh, do you uh, – I'm going to ask you because Sean Duxy, you know Duxy, big Duxy, uh, Melbourne yeah. supporter. He always went to the Demon Shop before our games and every time he did this season, we won, which wasn't hard to do because we won a lot, but he's really that type of superstitious. Did you have any superstitions uh, while you played? While I played, it was just – I always got there early. Um, seen Ronnie, who you know really well, our property guy, I always took my own boots because I was worried. I, there was a couple of guys at Hawthorne back in the day that the property steward forgot their boots. So I was yep. paranoid. I always took my own boots and yep. socks, socks and jocks and everything because I was just paranoid they might forget. Yeah. Because <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't Russell Robinson or, or Steinke. So yeah. <laughs> they have lots of those. Come on now, mate. You were an absolute uh, sensation when you came down uh, and joined us from Myrtle Footy. And I want to talk about that because it's an interesting story. You'd been playing back in the country. Was it for Myrtleford? Uh, you were playing for Myrtleford after you finished up with Hawthorne, given up on the uh, the AFL dream. But you went back and just relaxed and played some really good football. And then Melbourne came knocking. Tell us about that story. Yeah, I was, I was pretty lucky, Robbo. Like, I thought I'd miss my chance. So went yep. back to got, – got offered a job back um, back in Myrtleford at the big timber mill. Um, yep. Yeah, good money. And then playing footy, got paid to play footy back there. Um, the first year I struggled a little bit. I was just a bit, you know, when you get a kick in the ass, I struggled a little bit. But then really yes. started to enjoy my footy, playing with mates and my brother and, and you know, some really good players that we dropped. We got we were lucky enough to get up from the country, um, sorry, from the city, and yes. just really enjoyed my footy again. And, and I was lucky enough that Melbourne seen something that year. And, yep. yeah, I was invited down for the very last game of the year because Melbourne had so many injuries in their senior team that, Half their reserves were in the in the seniors, so I come yeah. down and played in the reserves and had a, was lucky enough to have a really good game. And yeah, now is it true? Is it true that you'd finished up your season with Myrtleford and you were on your pretty much a mad Monday, absolutely blind, or it might have been a mad week you'd had, and the uh, the club called and said we need you to come down and play a game for us, and that would have been in 1997. Uh, the last game of the season, I, I think it might have been, at the MCG, before the seniors played, you were drunk. Uh, you got the call at the pub. Is that true? And you you, you turned to the fellas and said, see you later, boys. I'm going to go play footy. It, it was Mad Tuesday, really. <laughs> yes. And um, I was there at the pub and the phone rang and the, I knew the publican really well. And he said, it's your dad. And of course like, you did. I'm like, this is not good. <laughs> and um, dad said, oh, this some bloke from Melbourne rang up and wants to know if you want to play on the weekend. And I said, oh, yeah. And I, I put the phone out and said, boys, we've had a couple. I said, what do you reckon? And they go, yeah, we're going home. Yes. Yeah. My dad says, you reckon you should come home? I said, I'll be home in the morning. So. <laughs> he didn't even go home. He stayed for a while. Yeah. Oh, and so that's the kind of guy you are, and that's why you were a, a great clubman. Did you? I think you might have even won a great uh, best clubman award. That was one of my most treasured uh, prizes on the shelf, mate. I'll tell you, best clubman. Oh, absolutely, I won a best clubman as well, and I hold that. Uh, not, not a you know, best and fairest was pretty good, but best clubman almost means more because as a Aussie guy, it is all about mateship, isn't it? And yeah. and being around uh, the guys and and fitting in with it all. So. If you're a good club, and then you're a very valuable part to the team. So, do you agree with that? I mean, did you do that, anything? That's, ex- that's why I played footy, Robbo. It was yeah. more to do with your mates than the accolades that come with playing footy. Yeah, um, you know, to be able to know when someone's a bit down or struggling a bit, and you can go and help that person, or, or they they can see the other way. Um, it, it, I think it's a, a special trait to have. So. Yeah. Okay, so Tan Lee Lee asked, which pub was it that you were at when you got the phone call? The Buffalo, the Buffalo Hotel. The Buffalo Hotel. Oh, yeah. Do you know that one? I think it's Tan Lee. Uh, she yeah. asked that question. Another question we've got here. We've got a lot of questions coming through today, Dave. Um, which game do you think you played your career best footy in? Or maybe not just your best game. What yeah. year? Can you give us some uh, insight? And then maybe as to why you played your best footy. Yeah, I, I think 2000 was probably the best year because we just had one out of the box too and we had a midfield that really worked for each other and it was really hard to tag someone. So every every week, even if you had a bad quarter, we, we started to work together and, and like Ooze, myself, Wowie, 
um, Stevie Power, Liam Chelly, Todd Viney, you know, in 98 too, was just, he lifted us to another level that we we felt like we could play against anyone. We, yeah. we went from boys to men, Robbo, in 2000, I think. So. Yeah, 2000 was an amazing year, wasn't it, mate? And, and while we went off, off his uh, nut that year, played some, and look, it really was a professional unit. If I remember back, me being in the forward line, I would look up to that midfield and see guys that were really coming together. Yeah, Jeff White um, tapping it down your yeah. throat. You um, had while we while we really fit. Um, you know, had Andrew Lee and Shelley in there who was just Troy a, Simmons. Troy Simmons Troy, coming yes. to help us out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what did you do that year? That uh, I mean, you just alluded to it there a little bit. But, but what made it so special, 2000? I and mean, we talked about 2000 a lot uh, on this show this, uh, since we started this. And, and I'm trying to explain why 2000 was so special and had we probably been a little bit older as a team, you know, coming up against that Essendon uh, uh, mob, maybe we would have gone just that one step further. But 2000 was pretty special, wasn't it? What did we do that year to create that sort of camaraderie? I, I think after 98, Robbo, where we... We sort of went from bottom dwellers to straight up there and made the made the prelim. I think we got a bit carried away, but then 2000 we knuckled down. We had a massive preseason. Like the mids, we were running like world record times, you know, for our time trials and yeah, and yeah. pushing each other to get better. And yeah. I think that that's what made it special. And I think I see the same with the demons this year. Like, yeah, you know, they went from you know, I was over there in 2018 when. Um, the Eagles pulled us apart and we, we yeah. couldn't even kick a point, let alone a goal. Yeah. But this year and just being so proud of the way the guys just kept going when the yeah, you know, when Bond kicked that goal, I think everyone sort of took a bit of a, a deep breath and thought, geez, we need the next one. Yeah. Um, it was very similar. Like they, they they believed in the training they'd done and that, that's what drove them to just dominate that, you know, the, the last quarter and yeah. bring it to the third quarter. So. It it looked it's, it's interesting, isn't it? And going back to our era, it's interesting what people are saying here. It was the first year for Brad Green in 2000. I think it was the first year for, for Wheelan, Brucey, Brucey. Wheatley, Brucey. Yep. Uh, we had a really good crew that came in that time. And, and it's amazing how the people that are tuned in right now and, and are commenting how they respond to that era from sort of 98 onwards, uh, how they respond to that group. There seems to be a lot of love for the Neil Danaher era. Um I mean, obviously, we, we had a, a bit of success there, but we didn't go all the way. So sometimes I feel like maybe we're a bit of a disappointment. Why do you think that it is that people really respond well to that 2000-plus era? Like, like you said, I think we were all disappointed we didn't get there. But to come from where we did, you know, obviously you were there when Demons in 97 were like a basket case. Yeah. yeah. To, to go through that with Neil and then I know Neil was really disappointed in 2000 that then we couldn't go on and keep going, but we're unlucky yeah. with injuries. You know? Yeah. But I think we stick together because we realised how hard we worked and we couldn't get the ultimate. We come up against probably the best team in yeah. the like, recent history. Yeah. 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 Lost one game for the year. Yeah. That, that, that makes it a little bit easier to swallow, but it doesn't, you know, it's, it's a hard one. Like you want to get that ultimate success and, we're, you know, we we're driven to try and get there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean the work, the body of work we put in in our preseason, preseasons through that period, and there's just so many good questions coming through at the moment. Uh, Steve Edwards asked why we are good every second year. We'll get to that one, Steve. Um, Louise asks a good question. Croato, Louise Croato says, "Do you think superior fitness is what made this year's team so exceptional?" I'm going to ask that question. But I'm going to say less about the forwards and the backs. You're a midfielder, man. Uh, you've watched, you obviously watch the midfield closely when you watch yeah. football now. What was it about these guys this year? Do you think, I mean, I reckon Petrarca was so much more fitter than he's yeah. ever been. Is that the reason why they played so well? I think so, Robbo. Like, you don't lose your skill, but when you're tired, you make a lot more mistakes. And I yeah. think they weren't as tired as I've seen them in other years. They just kept running. They just kept running over teams. And you make better decisions. And, and when you're not tired, you don't miss that kick that's only like 20 or 30 metres away that we were yep. we were turning some really critical balls over last year that, you know, really hurt us. And teams yeah. would score. And we turned them over in bad positions on the field, which yeah. really hurt us. Especially, you know, the backs to the mids. The mids would turn it over trying to use the handball too much. Yep. And you get scored against big time these days. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think... You know, it didn't really help the Bulldogs coming up against a really fit side like Melbourne are this year, uh, were this year. 
given that they had to play all those games coming in and we had the rest, it really does help finishing up, finishing up top of the ladder. Uh, you know, they, they was just sensational in the last quarter and they the just showed the run that they had in their legs. They were just so full of energy and just waiting to burst. So maybe that's why I felt so confident that we were going to be okay towards the end of the game. I don't know. I just don't remember feeling like, nah, it's all gone. We can't win this one. It's it's done. I still felt really positive. Did you have that notion? I think I sent a message. I'm not sure if you're on the WhatsApp, Robo, that I said don't, at half time when the, they'd come right back. I said, don't give up. The boys, like, I think we took the foot off the gas a little bit because, you know, we had such a good start and the Bulldogs were never going to not come. So, no. yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're a talented outfit, aren't they? And they've got some guys in there that are super fit, you know, Bailey and and obviously we know how what Bond and Bailey can do. But there's some young guys in that midfield as well. McRae, they're just, they're, they're accumulators. I was just waiting for it. It wasn't going to be a whole game like that. So maybe that's why I felt pretty good about it as well. Well, half time to even halfway through the third quarter, Bottom Pelly wins the medal. You know? Yeah, and then exactly. All of a sudden, Petraka just goes to another level and just really, he was playing well all game, but he just went to another level again because of yeah. his fitness. Yeah. He went to another stratosphere. Yeah. He went to another stratosphere. Now, uh, Riggers, let's go back uh, to our career again and uh, back to the days of playing. It was good times. We had a lot of fun together, and that's probably why we had the success every second year, albeit. And then towards the end of our careers, we were sort of starting to you know, put those years together. But you had a really special friendship at the Melbourne Football Club that still lasts today. It was a friendship that, that, that you know, you enjoyed socialising with this guy. You played golf with this guy. A bit of a bit of a gamble every now and with this guy. I mean, everyone did with uh, Big Ox. What was it about Ox and you, mate? Because you were thick as thieves and still are to this very day. Yeah, I, I think Robbo was. He was from Beechworth originally, up that way. And when when I got there, he sort of took me under his wing because we were only a couple of years apart. I was a little bit older than you guys, as you know, like because I was mature age. And I thought, you know, Steve Phoebe took me under his wing, and then Ox. And Nita and Hoppy, because we're all that sort of same age. So the Ox, we, we love, mate, we love drinking, we love gambling, you know, we love footy. It was pretty easy. So, <laughs> I'll tell you what. A little bit more than me, the punting side. But Yeah. No, you weren't as massively into the punting. In fact, it was just a bit of a thing to do every now yeah. and then. But you certainly loved your golf, mate. Yeah. Now, now, I know your golf game is very much like your football game. It was power. It's all power, <laughs> mate. Now, what's the I'm longest... So erratic. <laughs> what's the longest drive you've ever hit? I want to know. Probably 300. Probably yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Probably with a 9-iron, too. <laughs> no, no, no. What he used to laugh, he'd go, it would be about 200 out and I'd pull out the driver and he'd just yeah. start laughing. So. <laughs> now, you you are very a very good golfer. Shane Wawode, very good golfer. Yep. Adam Uze, very good golfer. Jeff White, very good golfer. Schwarter, amazing. Steve Phoebe, Matthew Phoebe. Yep. Mate, we could, you guys could go on tour and make some money. You're probably better golfers than you were footballers. What's oh. going on? Oh, I think growing up country especially, it's cricket, yep. footy, golf. You know, yep. like that's, and the hand-eye stuff, you know, in basketball, the hand-eye, all that stuff helps your golf. Yeah. Yeah. So, Golf was probably one of the things that the club would let us do. Yes. Where they wouldn't stop you from doing it because it was, yeah, it was safe. The old man's game. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. We could actually do that on our day off and not have any troubles with the club. So, it was probably that's why we took up golf. Yeah. And and it was myself, Ooze, Wowie, and Whitey would play. We'd play two against two, me and Whitey against uh, Wowie and Ooze. Yeah. Every day off. So, it was great fun. Darren Cow as well. Darren Cow. Cowell was probably the best of all. Of them. Yes. Yeah. Darren Cowell, actually, ladies and gentlemen, used to play nine holes of golf just to calm himself yeah. before a game at the MCG, a seniors game. And I tell you, the man threw darts. That's what he did. He, he was single figures, like, from the minute yeah. I played golf with him. He was really good. Yeah. And actually, Jeff White, Jeff White, I think he got himself pretty pretty much close to scratch. Yeah. He uh, he manages and looks after golfers as well. Um, he's up in Queensland now. We had him on the show and he talks about his love for golf. But yeah. my word, for a big man, he can actually play, can't he? Yeah. Did you see his favourite photo? Adam Scott, when he won the uh, Masters back in the US that time, yeah. he was supposed to go back to Melbourne, oh, sorry, back to Brizzy or whatever, and Adam rang him and said, oh, do you reckon you could change your flights um, for a couple of days? I've got a game of golf in Vegas. And Whitey's like, yeah, no worries. I want to play with the Masters guy. So he goes, no worries, just get there. 
I got a couple of mates turning it up, and Whitey was a massive Chicago Bulls fan. Yes. Up, he still yes. Is. And so he rocks up, and Adam's there. No worries. So, I mean, mate's coming in a minute. And his mate was Michael Jordan and one of Jordan's best mates, and they rocked up to play golf. And Whitey could not even speak. Oh. Apparently, they were playing skins, and Whitey actually putted the last one, had to make a birdie, and Jordan sledged him, and he made a birdie. So, Can you imagine that? Can you oh, actually I mean, imagine? No way. no way. It's a true story. True story. And the best thing about it is Whitey is a massive, massive Chicago fan. Still is. Still loves is. his you have a look at his um, Instagram and all that. He's always got his bull stops on. So. <laughs> he, he absolutely is. Michelle Nicholson says, happy Gilmore is how I play. How are you, Michelle? Welcome to this. I know you're a little bit late. No problem at all. Yeah, I've got a great story about Michael Jordan. Well, not about Michael Jordan, but about a mate of mine. He was actually MC of my wedding, right? Um, he's a boxing promoter. Uh, he was in the States promoting a big fight ball. And it was, I think it was a, it might've been a Tyson fight. So it was a big deal. And it was like MGM there in Las Vegas. Everyone's there. It's it's the cream of the crop. It's awesome. And he's just sitting there. This is bloody amazing. Just not worried about the fight at all. That's about to come up. He's looking over here. He's seeing Pamela Anderson. You know, he looks over here. He sees every Hollywood actor that Brad Pitt's over here. It's huge, right? Anyway, his mate who's there with him, he flew over from uh, from Victoria. He goes, mate, you know, look, Pamela Anderson. Oh, you know, I love her, Baywatch. It's awesome. Can I have you? Oh, here's my camera. I'll oh, take a photo with me. And so Joey, my mate, goes, yeah, no worries. They walk over. And Joey's sort of a bit of a bit of oblivious to, to celebrities or whatever. Knew who Pamela Anderson was. F- funny that. Uh, he go, he, and his mate goes over and goes, oh, can I have a photo whatever? So he stands up, Pamela stands up, and this other fella comes and stands next to him. And so he's he's standing there with two people. And Joey, my mate, says to one of them, can you just sit down? He wants can he just wants a photo with Pamela Anderson. And he, he could see the blood drain from his mate's face as he has a photo with Pamela. And then he walks back over and he goes, do you know who you just told to sit down? You just told Michael Jordan to sit down, you yeah. big and ass. <laughs> Can you imagine telling oh, Michael Jordan, imagine hey, that. get out of the photo, mate? <laughs> so his mate never spoke to him ever again. <laughs> uh, no, mate, you had a really great uh, uh, bunch of guys in the midfield. I think it's the, uh, the the moral to that story. You know, some great names uh, for the Melbourne Football Club that still are great names. And these people that talk, you know, that are commenting right now, they they mention these names a lot. We've had Andrew Lee on Shelly on the show. That this, this, uh, come up a couple of times. That goal that Chell kicked. Oh. In Adelaide, what about that? That was that's because he posted it every time. He <laughs> yes. posted it. Yeah. He's a great friend of yours too. The 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 names that end in I, Rigoni and oh, Leon Shelley. Yeah. His his grandfather and grandmother it was from the same town as my grandmother. So very cool. incestuous, the yeah. Italian people, mate. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> hey, mate, I've got to it'd be remiss of me to say you won three premierships too with the Sandringham Zebras. Uh, that was a pretty amazing achievement, Matt. You would have loved that. Oh, exactly, Rob. I um, yeah, I started playing senior footy when I was sixteen with Myrtleford, and I didn't win my first flag till I was 30, 30 years old. You know, with Sandingham. So yeah, it was, re- it was really special. Like to have you know, that success. I had I won an under eighteen premiership. Yep. Which, and you had that feeling, but then not to win one to you know for another. You know, ten years just about was yeah, yeah. a great way to finish. The boys at Sandringham were an amazing bunch of bunch of guys as well, and I, the whole club down there was made made me feel really welcome. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. What now? What are you drinking there, boys? Is it a vitamin B? Because that's all you drink, oh, isn't it? Vitamin B, mate. B. Really, <laughs> <all you know. laughs> now you you know the kind of guy he is. He's drinking VB. He's from Murderford. It's all pretty simple stuff. Don't try to fluff me around with any of this. What about Nita with his craft beer? Mate, do you get into it? You don't get into craft beer, do you? Hey, I've got to support Nita. It's not to the south. It's good. So hopefully a slab rocks up on the veranda after this pump Give up. It a, we're giving it a plug. Mouth yep. of the south. And we've obviously, the south, we, we know the social beast. And the, he, uh, actually, he actually designed that beer because I said to him his other one was a bit fruity. So he's been trying to help me out. <laughs> you don't like the fruity beers, mate. No, no. not at all. Come on now. That's not Australian. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted fruit, I'd drink wine, mate. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Now, mate, um, if people want to get a, involved in William Adams, yep. want to buy some uh, heavy machinery, let's talk yep. about it. How do they? How do they contact you, mate? What? Are, what, are, what, are, what are, does it help? We obviously, got to plug the business. Yeah, just just Google williamadams.com.au, mate. It comes up. You can um, send a link there, and they can give you a call if you're looking for. We do 
right down to like one ton excavators, skid steers up to, you know, 200 ton diggers and stuff, mining gear. But yeah, if yeah, they need exactly. anything, just get online. The website's fired up, mate, and they can send in. I think we're on Facebook, Instagram, you name it, Twitter. So. Yeah, absolutely. Lastly, before I let you go, mate, and get back to your family, that's been absolutely awesome, a, a trip down memory lane. Who was your toughest opponent? Who, who was the hardest bloke to get a kick on? I'd probably say the hardest bloke to get a kick on was Robert Harvey, just because yeah. of the sheer will to run, and you had to be like on him. But probably the sec- Paul Kelly, mate, he was one of the toughest guys because he played rugby as well, mate. Yeah, He yeah. was so hard to play on. Well, hang on. He was tough to play on. You were playing on Paul Kelly once. And a, bl- a harder bloke hit you that day. Tell tell yeah. people about that story. <laughs> See me teeth. I'm lucky I've still got them. My very first game, I think we were in uh, Auckland, weren't we, Robbo? Or Wellington? Yes. Yep. And I'm playing on Paul Kelly. I'm doing all right. And just as I go to tackle him, you've ran straight through him and cleaned me and, and Paul <laughs> Kelly up at the same time. So. <laughs> I did. I, t- I lined him up and I thought, oh, Paul's going to be real happy with me yeah. here. I'm going to take out Paul Kelly. Oh. He's going to be real happy. Well, I, I sort of... The eyes glazed over a little bit too much, yeah. and at the last minute, he sort of dodged and I've gone straight through you. <laughs> I was, we went in at half time. I was so scared I didn't want to pull my mouth guard out because I thought my teeth were sitting in the mouth guard. But, yeah. <laughs> well, the joke's on me because I think in the third quarter, I've gone out there and I went to I went to spoil the ball, which is something you know that I never, never really did. did. I yeah. never really did. And this is the reason why I never really did after that because it was Greg Stafford and shout out to Big Staff because he's the man that's looking yeah. after our goal kicking at the moment at the Melbourne yeah. Ball Club. How good were they in the grand final with their goal kicking? Uh, well done, Staff. I've gone to spoil the ball from him, given it the big wind up, and I only got up to about his elbow. <laughs> and my thumb, my thumb hit his broke elbow. And I broke my thumb on his elbow. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> so while well, you blokes were all drinking in Auckland, so what was it? No, it was Wellington. Wellington. Yeah, where you were all drinking in Wellington. I'm in a hospital somewhere. Well, I've never seen you spoil the ball ever again. No, so. well, that's why. Yeah. People, I mean, there's origin stories everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. It's the reason why I didn't do it, okay? <laughs> I knew it was a part of football, but it hurt. <laughs> so, you know, they were really great days, Paul, weren't they? When no, we played. Right I mean, we're one... One thing that I've I've gleaned from this year is Simon Goodwin has got these boys together. And, and it's not something that's just happened this year. It's been a build over a, a long time. I mean, I saw it when I was working at the club full-time under Ruzi. Simon was all about trying to make the guys feel like they were a group together. These guys were going we're gonna to play together and we're going to party together. They'd, they'd drink together. They really created this uh, culture of togetherness. It's something that we really had. You know, we really did work hard on that, and I see it. I see it now in this group. Do you think, mate, that this work that they've done and the fact that they're young, do you think it's going to last for a while? Robbo, if injury, if they don't get injuries, definitely, mate. They've got that, that confidence now. You just see them like you hear all the boys like Jack Viney. You can't that that heart that he spoke with at the end of the game where he said, mate, he was in a team that was shit that won two games for the year. Yeah. basket case like that stuff just makes you angry and what yeah. makes you get better and then here the track and all the other boys talk about how close they are together and in lockdown that they work together yeah i think you know if we if we can be lucky with the injuries to it you know max and the big all our key guys yeah we've got great depth now mate we can be really really good for the next you know three four years so absolutely they will be mate and it's been really great to chat to you bull um we could talk no. for ages about the demons and what they're doing at the moment. And this is what we're doing every single week. We so, we start getting on a bit of a roll about the way the guys played and the questions come through. They've been really great questions, guys, that have come through. They've been really engaging. Um, everyone wants to see our old boys. We haven't seen enough of you, Bull. At, uh, you now- can answer your mate's one question that he said about every second year we're good, Robert. Yes. And I, think, yeah. I think that was the thing I just said about injuries. you just got to be lucky and we... We ha- often had those injuries where we couldn't yep. get like a full year together with, you know, year after year with our best team. Yeah. I think that's what really hurt us, you know, like, yeah. 100%. Gary Marta just asks um, another player to get on the show would be Simon Godfrey. Now, Bull. He doesn't say much. <laughs> he doesn't say much, does he? What, no. what about Bull? Uh, about uh, God is best runner, best oh. runner we ever had. Yeah. Uh, at yeah, the club, uh, we wouldn't. We wasn't really a natural footballer. Wasn't the best kick, uh, you know, the best at everything. But 
could run. What do, pre-seasons he was at his best. What was it about ball? Uh, about uh, Goddard's hit ball? He was just amazing, wasn't he? Mate, he was just like he was on a robot, mate. He was so good at running, at just and but then. You gotta give him credit, mate. I played with him at Sandringham, and mate, he dominated. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, he was he was unbelievably kick goals. He'd do all that, but at the senior level, they made him play his role. If you if you had to let him go, he could seriously play. Yeah, Frank, Frank, Frank the tank. <laughs> Frank the Tank, Frank the Tank. One of the best, one of the best Mad Mondays you'll ever see was Frank the Tank when he finally decided that he was going to have a beer again. He'd been off the the drink for a few years, didn't he? Because he wanted to commit to this. He, he knew he had some issues with drinking, so he took a couple of years hiatus. He drank milk and lemonade at our social events, and then finally, you remember the time he decided to have a drink? What did the boys do? We went mental. <laughs> I told him though on the first footy trip where we had a beer, I said, I'll be your look, I'll look after your beer wingman. Yeah. He was that out of control after the first night. I said, You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> if you are saying he's out of control, you're on the, you know he was pretty bad. So totally deserved that nickname of Frank the Tank. Bull, awesome stuff, mate. Um, big shout out to the family there. Say good day to Trudes for me. I hope she's, I mean, she's the one, she's the one, mate, that got you through that whole career, truly, Definitely, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. What an Especially amazing. My back was no good, mate. That should, yeah, yeah. And that's the last thing we should say, Rig, is at the end of your career, probably cut short a little bit because you're crueled by a really bad back injury. What was that injury again? Was it a, a disc thing or? Yeah, a... I, blew, I blew out a disc in my back doing weights. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just going just a little bit too hard in the gym. Just mate. trying to lift too much. <laughs> You're trying to lift the weights that I was trying to lift, and it just yeah, didn't work out. You're a big ass, though, so that's right. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> big butt. Bull, get back to Trudes and the girls. Um, I hope to see you soon, mate. We'll see you at the yeah. G when we uh, present this Premiership Cup. Can't yeah? wait, buddy. Can't wait. Good on you, mate. We'll talk to you sure. soon, pal. See you, mate. See yeah.